and the outbreak of COVID-19, the illness caused by the novel coronavirus originating in Wuhan, China, is a significant challenge for the entire world. The government of Canada has created the infrastructure to respond to the public health threats of the virus and is well prepared to act in collaboration with provincial and territorial governments and international partners to minimize the health, economic and social impacts of this rapidly evolving public health issue. Canada's response is based on plans and guidance related to pandemic preparedness. While the government of Canada has been focusing on containing the spread of COVID-19, it has also been undertaking coordinated planning to prepare for possible border transmission of the virus and to mitigate the impacts of a potential pandemic. And joining us live from Canada is Dr. Rukewe Ogumba, a medical doctor. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi. Looking at the chart of cases in um, Canada, it would seem that you saw a peak in April, followed by a drop and now a seeming rise. Could you describe what the fight looks like from your point of view? Actually, our highest number of cases was on May 3rd. We had 2,500 cases in a single day, and that dropped um, significantly on June 26 to 176 cases to many provinces having no cases at all. Now, as we started to reopen again, when from the phase two to phase three, then we had a very sharp rise. And that's where the problem is. As we relax the lockdown rules, uh, we had more cases. And we're right now at about 437 cases a day, which is, again, much lower than 2,500 in, in May. But still, it's 437 more cases than we want. Now, what are we doing? The fight is real. Um, COVID-19 is real. Um, in this world today, you know, over um, 16 million people have been infected with 650,000 deaths. In Canada, we are very fortunate to have just about 100,000 infected people and less than 10,000 um, deaths compared to the United States that have over 150,000 deaths and over 4 million infected. So we are doing good compared to that, but we don't want anybody to die. I think we are using our six-pronged um, approach to flatten the curve. Yeah, the I was just, I was just going to ask that. You know, what aspect in terms of the measures followed would you say have been the most successful so far? I, I think the six-pronged approach is really working to so dramatically improve preparedness. That was the first thing. Be prepared for the pandemic. We're talking PP for health workers, yeah. you know, at the total lockdown. Don't go out if you can't, um, if you can afford to, especially if you have comorbidities like diabetes or you're aged elderly. And then the second thing was the social distancing. We, we thought that helped us a lot. Now, you can see the difference between Canada and the United States. I told you numbers. We're neighbors. It was because there was no universal order, federal character showing up to tell everyone to do the same thing. And so, of course, different provinces had different rules, and that was affecting everyone. So we had a standard. Our prime minister came out every day and addressed the nation. Yeah. And I think that helped a lot. And, of course, the, the third one was um, just changing the operating model, just changing things from time to time, especially when you see that um, you have asked people to stay at home. How are they coping financially? So Canada launched a very big package to, to give workers um, stimulus. And every month they got $2,000 if they worked in the low income group. And, um, you know, businesses got loans um, with forgiveness of $10,000 at yeah. the time just to get you to stay at home and really, reduce really the risk. Really interesting. Really interesting. But really important because yeah. the financial, um, you know, stress will make people do things that will put other people at risk. Yeah. We have to invest in innovation. I mean, one of the things we we're doing was to make sure as we opened to check people before you enter places. So temperature checks, especially when you can't do the two meter social distancing, is mandatory in Canada. In public places, you must have a mask. I just took mine off because of this um, interview. Yeah. Every patient waiting for me has a mask on. It's very important because we think that even in barber shops, we have seen zero percent transmission. The proximity to Obama, you can imagine, because they're all using masks. We know that once the virus does not move, human beings yeah. move the virus. Let, let me, so if we're not moving, yeah. So let, let me quickly let me also quickly you know, bring in something. I, I want to know what keeps you from. It's a very interesting story from what you've shared about Canada, you know, and of course I'm, I'm expecting that you know other countries around the world would also be trying to learn some of the things that Canada has been able to do to keep their numbers, you know, that way. Um, what would you say has kept you as a frontline worker from getting fatigued um, in this period? 
funny enough, um, it's it's a very interesting question. There's been a lot of physician burnout, I will tell you, and healthcare workers are really under stress. Initial period of working really long hours and not even knowing how vulnerable you are because we didn't know much about the virus. At least we knew we had to use PPE to do the patient encounter. So mental health um, challenges have been there. I'm talking depression and there have been some cases of suicide uh, of physicians and um, other healthcare workers who couldn't just cope with the magnitude of it. And like I said, in Canada, we have been very fortunate, but some of my colleagues have actually tested positive for COVID from treating patients. So going to work, knowing that you're going into, um, you know, a deadly area, if you will, because we're in a war really against this virus, it's very stressful mentally. And financially, it has not been as great, even though we're working long hours, you know, we're not necessarily getting the same remuneration we were getting, but everybody understands that we're still getting paid. And um, just in general, I get up every day knowing that I'm going to make a difference. I do my little prayers and then, you know, I, I go out with my chin up and um, pray that I don't um, get infected because two of my colleagues, like I said, got tested positive yesterday and one of them is not doing very well. So yes, it's a very big concern um, in this new environment. Everyone has to be more diligent, more diligent. We have to practice right. exactly what we are preaching and All that's right. what I think will work. In the end, everyone must play their role yeah. to make sure this virus goes away. I'm talking everyone. For as long as there's coronavirus in any corner of this globe, we are all at risk because there's human movement and that's the risk. We need to move, yes, but we need to take the precautions yeah. that we say. Wash your all hands, right. use a mask, distance as much as you can. Don't go in crowded areas. Avoid parties at this time. This all is right. not the time um, for it. Dr. Rukewe, thank you so much. Um, thank you for the for the you know service that you've also put in saving lives. Um, we hope that we can speak with you again, hopefully before the uh, um, well at the end of this whole pandemic. I'll be happy to come back. Always.